Years ago, I remember reading, couldn't even tell you where it was, that uh, you don't know anything to be true unless you've verified it yourself. I never found this saying to be more true than in the military. When I compared what military intelligence reports would tell us is on the objective, and then what we actually found on the OBJ, they were never the same. This train of thought definitely applies in the knife making world as well. Everywhere you turn, somebody has advice, a technique, an absolute answer based on what their best friend's brother-in-law overheard somebody say at a hammer. It may be useful information, but until you've verified it, you'll never know if it's accurate. Today I'm going to show you how I verify the hardness of my blades using this, the Ames Model 1 Hardness Tester. Bob Oldman, full-time knife maker and part-time self-proclaimed grill master. In this video series, I reveal many of the close hold secrets and hard-learned wisdom that will push your knife making to the next level. If you want to catch every episode of these videos and elevate your knife making, hit that subscribe button. We've all heard that a knife gets its soul from the quench or that until it's hardened, it's just a knife-shaped object. But why is testing the hardness important? In my opinion, testing the knife is important because as you develop your skills, you need to be able to verify what works and what doesn't. For example, if a blade is too hard, it's liable to be brittle or too difficult to sharpen. If the blade is too soft, it can wear prematurely or possibly bend or deform at the edge. The hardness number is not the only important factor in determining the performance of your blade. Other elements that will determine performance besides the hardness number are the composition of the steel, your normalizing process, your thermal cycling process, and the blade geometry. If you want to grow and learn as a knife maker, you need to be able to verify the hardness numbers on your blades. All right, so this is the Ames Model 1 Hardness Tester. What this is, is a portable professional tester designed for use on materials that cannot be brought to the bench for testing. Its level of accuracy is as good as a high quality bench tester. And it's better than most import testers. Ames still manufactures these testers and they do offer repair and calibration services for them. One of the nice things about this tester is that it takes up no bench space. You can put it on a shelf and forget about it and pull it out when you need it. So in a small shop, it's ideal. All right, so let's talk for a minute about the uh, different components of the tester. So you have a basic metal frame here. You have a handle, a, um, I would call this a load screw knob, a reading section here where you actually read your, your hardness number. You have this load dial, and I'll demonstrate all of this here in a little bit. Um, you have your penetrator, which has a diamond tip, and then this small piece here is a, a anvil, and I believe it's made out of carbide. All right, so a hardness tester should come with some kind of a test block. And this one is marked on the side. I don't know if you can see it, but it says C64. So this block is verified hardened to Rockwell 64. Now, when I got this hardness tester, it came with this block and another one that is, um, I believe it's eight points lower. So I can test it against two different blocks at different, uh, different hardness levels. One of the things is, with these blocks, you're actually only supposed to test them on one side. And when I got this one, it had dimples, a few dimples on the back side. Another quick tip is when you use these test blocks, each time you test, whether on the block or on your knife blade, you should never have two tests within three diameters of the dimple. So basically, uh, whatever the diameter of the dimple will say, this is five thou, um, you should punch 15 thousandths away from that hole. And that's just to keep the steel from mushrooming into the previous crater that you created. Uh, so the first thing I do when I use this is I verify my hardness, or I verify my tester on this block, this test standard. The way this works, is first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open this up 
far enough that I can get the test standard in it. Okay, now this particular tester can test a one inch range. So it's kind of like a micrometer. It tests the zero to one inch range. And, uh, and that's not open enough yet. So we'll keep going. Now they do make a stand to hold this thing by the handle and uh, that stand would be really useful. I don't have one. So what I do is I support my tester with these fingers on the back and then I hold my blade or whatever I'm checking uh, in place. Now the way this works, and now it's fit in here, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the knob until I feel the slightest amount of resistance. And then as soon as I feel that resistance, the needle will start to move. And uh, at that point, so then when that needle starts to move, I will tighten down until this is lined up on the point where it says set. Okay. The next step is I come up here to this collar where the readings are taken and I push this little pin all the way down on the top tight against the sight glass. This is the sight glass right here and it's got a index line inside of it. And I will try to get a, a photograph or something to put up that shows exactly what that looks like. So then I'm going to tighten this knob and you can see that this thing is moving. At this point I need to be holding the handle so that my hand doesn't influence the reading. And I'm going to go all the way to the 150 mark. Just like that. All right. Now, once I'm to the 150 mark, then I can back it back down. And I'm just going to back down to the set line. Okay, and there I'm at the set line. So then I can look at my sight glass and I can take my reading. And this is reading 62, which I know that I said it says 64 on my block. And uh, that, is, uh, that is probably correct. As long as I've owned this, this 64 block has always read 62. And that's just, you know, it's a little bit off. And I probably could send it for calibration, but because it's always been consistently off by two, I just add those two to my knife blades. And it's off by two, not only on this 64 block, but on the other lower hardness block also. So then once I've taken the reading on my test block, then I'm ready to take a reading on my knife. Now that I'm gonna test a blade, First thing I need to do is I need to close up this gap quite a bit because this thing, uh, this blade is quite a bit thinner than the test block was. So I'm going to crank this down a ways. Probably getting close here. Now I'm going to test the blade in an area that is fully hardened, that is flat and parallel. Notice this blade has a tapered tank, so I don't want to test back here where there's a taper. Um, but there's a bolster section right here, and it is parallel side to side. So that's where I'm going to test. It'll be hidden by the bolsters once they go on. So I'm going to insert the blade, close it down too far. Alright, we'll slide the blade in here. So I'm a good distance away from any holes and I'm going to start, start tightening this up. And just like with the test block, I'm supporting the frame with my fingers while I'm holding the knife and I'm just going until I start to feel some drag and see that needle move. Now the needle has moved a little bit, the penetrator is tight on the blade and I'm ready to test. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the set mark. I'm going to reset my reading indicator and put the pin against the top of the sight glass like that and then I'm going to tighten this up and we're going to go all the way to 150. Okay. 
right there's 150 I'm gonna back it back off I'm gonna come back down and stop right at the index marker that says set okay and my reading says 60 exactly now if you recall I'm my I know my indicator is off by two so this blade is probably at 62 but I don't rely on one reading. I take two or three readings, an average. If I get the same reading twice in a row, I don't take a third reading. All right, we're gonna tighten it down, hold it by the handle, put it at the set mark, reset the reading dial, go to 150, Right there, I'm going to back it off, come back to the set mark, and I did reposition the blade. I don't know if you caught that, I didn't say it earlier, but I repositioned the blade, and I've got 60 again. So, two readings of the same, I'll call that good. I know that this blade, I'm adding those two, so I know this blade is at 62 Rockwell C scale. And that is, uh, that's it on the Ames hardness tester. That's how it works. So that's the Ames Model 1 hardness tester. A couple things to keep in mind about buying one of these things. First, they are not a budget alternative to a bench test. Prices on these can be fairly high, and buying a used one can be risky. Most of the Ames testers that I've seen for sale used, like on eBay or Craigslist, they look pretty rough, and they're clearly in need at least of repair and potentially could be beyond repair. I'm not saying there aren't good deals out there, but you just need to be careful. Another important thing to know about these Ames testers is that Ames makes hardness testers in different ranges. This particular tester has both a B and a C scale on it, and it's a very common model, but there are testers out there that are in other ranges and don't have a C scale. The hardness range for knives is always measured in Rockwell C. So make sure if you're looking for one of these that it's marked and calibrated in Rockwell C range. As always, if you have any questions, throw that in the comments section. And if you have any subjects you'd like to see me cover in future videos, throw that in the comments section as well. Also, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Let's build this channel together. Until next time, stay safe out there. I'm Bob and this is Ranger Made Knives, out.